Hi guys, it's uh, John here again with another model inbox review. Um, today we're looking at the Elvis Saladin Mark II armoured car, used by the British Army and a number of other services around the world. Um, the model we're actually looking at today, I'm not going to do a boxing history because there's no point, there was only one box. It's the JB Models um, offering in 176 scale. But what I want to do is I'm just going to go through the different options that you can get. And we'll go through the costings when I go through the actual box, uh, the, you know, the actual kit, Gump. But I'll just give you some idea of the options because the options are quite interesting on this kit. And two of them are very interesting. Um, the first option you can get in 176 scale is the Airfix kit. But be very aware that the Airfix kit isn't an Airfix kit. It's actually a JB Models kit. It's the same kit in this box as the one that I'll be reviewing in a minute. Um, Airfix bought JB Models and they produced uh, the Vickers light tank and also the Saracen armoured car. Um, a number of the other vehicles that they produced were the Bedford refuelling truck and replenishment vehicle and the AFV fighting support vehicle. They were all originally JB Models kits in 176 scale and they slotted very nicely into Airfix's armoured range being similar uh, scale to all their other armoured kits. So the first option available um, which you can get in 72nd scale is the Airfix kit and the kit that I'm doing a review on is actually this one, the JB Models offer. Um, this kit was actually originally released in 1994 and it only had one box release and that was the one that you know that's the one that's in front of you. Um, I don't know why it was only ever released in one box, and I'm pretty sure that the model was actually released and on the shelves by JB Models for its duration until they have export the company. Um, but this is the only box that's a boxing that's available, and as I said, it's originally a 1994 release. The other options available, you can get one in one seven, sorry, one fortieth scale uh, from a company called Midori, but you can also get one in one seventy second scale by a company called Grigory OKB, and I think they're a Russian company. Haven't got any boxing pictures of that, it's a shame really. Um, and I don't really know much about it, but I do know the kit's about here and there. Um, that's a Russian company, o uh, Grigory OKB, and this one is available in 140th scale. Um, and this is by Midori Models. Then you go to 135th, and 135th is probably the most common um, model available. But every single kit, in 135th scale is a standalone model. They're not reboxed by anybody else. The first company um, that I want to bring your attention to is a company called Acura Armour, and they specialise sort of in multimedia plastic construction where they, they utilise a lot of photo etch parts and resin. And I th there's usually a sprue in there of injection moulded parts, but I'm not so sure with a salad in. I think it's it's um, it's PE and uh, resin, uh, so that's accurate armor. Then Ace Models do um, a Saladin Mark II as well. Um, that's interesting because this one's in one seventy second scale, and I always thought they produced it in one thirty fifth, but it's a seventy second scale kit. It's quite plain simple there. There we go, one seventy second. Um, you can also get a kit by a company called Dartmoor Models, and this is in one thirty fifth scale. Again, this is a resin kit, um, and I don't think it's a nice resin kit. I don't think it's a particularly fantastic one, uh, but it is available in limited supply, and I have seen it here and there crop up on uh, media sales sites like eBay, um, but it's quite pricey, uh, if I remember right, but I can't remember what the exact, exact price of it is. Um, Dragon do a model of this kit as well, and Dragon's model is probably the best option in terms of value for money and quality. Um, it's similar, it's, it, it may be slightly better in quality than the Tamiya kit, um, but I'll go into the Tamiya kit when I go into the, the costings later, but that's a Dragon offering in 35th scale. Um, there's another company who use injection resin, cast metal and photo etch brass parts, and this is a company called Firing Line, and they produce a salad in Mark II as well, which is, um, yeah, it's interesting. Again, I've seen this here and there about... Um, Scalecraft do another kit, and the, and the only reason why I've got this <laughs> as a model is because you actually have to put it together. 
it doesn't come built up in the box um, I think you have to assemble the wheels um, put the batteries into it because it's actually motorized but it's a snap together model kit um, and that's the only reason why I put it in here but it is really more of a toy than it is a model kit um, but it, yeah it's interesting it's, it's about here and there it's quite dear as well and then also of course you've got the the Tamiya releases and I'm, I'm showing you two different versions of the Tamiya kit because there's an early release version which is on a box similar to this and then they change the parts here and there to produce this version as well um, it is based on the original version from Tamiya but I think there's a, an additional sprue with revised parts on it to finish the kit into the the upgraded um, the, like the Saladin Mark II proper um, so that's that's the actual kits that are available um, that's a nice image there of I believe um, I think that's in a I don't think it's in a museum actually I think it's in a private collection um, but that's a Saladin Mark II at some sort of uh, rally some sort of uh, military vehicle rally i want to bring your attention now to the table i'll just take this down and try and bring it down so you can see the model in question i don't think this video is going to take a huge amount of time because there's not an awful lot to this kit to go through but this is the kit in question this is the box um i've picked this model up quite cheap actually maybe two or three years ago um it's not in the original bag and to my shock and horror, I actually found out that it's not complete either. Um, well, I'll just take these parts out of the bag very quickly. It won't take very long. Just pop that over there. And we'll go through the uh, instruction leaflet first. Just pop that over there. The instruction leaflet with JB models was basically an instruction leaflet like this. It's about A5 size. And you've got... Um, the information on the front, JB models, Saladin Mark II armoured car. The serial number allotted to the vehicle by Alvis was FV601. Um, and they did three or four different variants of the Saladin. Um, but this is the most commonly produced version, the 76mm armed six-wheel drive Mark II armoured car. And then you've got some stats and some history on the front. And the thing that interesting as well is that JB Models is actually a British company. Can you see there? Made in Great Britain, P.O. Box, Deeping, St. James and Peterborough. Interesting. The, um, the instruction leaflet has a, a weird look of, I have just come out of the photocopier about it. It just doesn't look like an original print. We'll open the instructions up and the kit actually builds up in five stages. Although the first two stages are really just sub-assemblies and they're quite quite easy sub-assemblies. The first section here is to build the axle and the wheels and there are six of those obviously so you repeat that six, uh, five times. And then you've got the two smoke canisters in section two and three. Um, these are smoke um, they're smoke like smoke ejectors and they fit either side of the uh, the turret and then in section four you've got the the main gun and turret assembly with the machine gun on the top and the smoke canisters there fit onto the side of the, of the forward section of the, of the turret there and in section five you build the body shell up and then apply all the wheels and the thing i must say about these instructions is that although there's not a huge amount of parts and there's not an awful lot to put together on this kit I think it only has about 40 odd parts the, the instructions are a little bit vague to follow um, yeah there are arrows showing you where the parts go in relation to the different you know the different location parts on the kit but um, then it's not particularly it's it's not an you know it's more of an applied science and guesswork here and there as to where some of the parts go, especially here where there, there are dividers that go in between the wheels. Um, there's two on each side, and I've had a look at the parts and yeah they're they're not easy to follow as to where those parts exactly go, and I think you're going to have to put the wheels in place before you put them in place because. There's not an awful lot underneath to tell you where everything goes. Um, 
but the kit you know I have actually built the Saras the Saracen armored car by JB models and from what I remember building of that kit it's pretty similar to this in terms of you know the quality of the model and everything uh, but it wasn't a bad build and it's relatively accurate and quite a nice looking kit when it was finished so I'm hoping that this is going to be the same on the back page you've got uh, a decal ID and also a paint guide for the vehicle and again this is really really vague on here you've got eight different paints that are ID'd um, they all have humbral colours which is nice matte black uh, 33 matte bronze green 75 and so on and so on but then when you get to the actual guide here it shows you where the different colours are ID too but the arrows they're not easy to see exactly where the parts are that you're supposed to paint here and there. And the other thing that's interesting is, is that Mat 93 is desert yellow. So one of these variants is actually a desert yellow vehicle, perhaps based in Aden, perhaps based in Egypt, perhaps based in Cyprus, or I'm, I'm not quite sure. But there is no number three attached to any part of that paint guide. But... Um, I think you'll find that one of these versions here that you have decals for is actually, uh, yeah, there you go, overall colour scheme for is actually the desert yellow version. I have got some photographs of the desert yellow version and that could be quite a nice option. I might go for that. So that's the instruction leaflet. Then we get to the transfers, the decals themselves. And try not to laugh because <laughs> that's them there. These decals, they're, they're not great. They're, they're certainly not, um, they're not highly detailed and crisp and clear. And the, the registration numbers on those plates, if I can bring it a little bit closer to the, the camera, I'm hoping it's going to focus, but it doesn't seem to want to, which is a shame. But they're not very clear to read. You can make out that that's RGX 850, I think it is, or maybe 250. But they're not very clear to read and those other symbols that go on the mud guards and the um in some cases the turrets the sides they're not fantastically clear either so the transfers on this kit if i remember the saracen was exactly the same they're they're not great but they do apply quite nicely um yeah they do go on all right now then <clears throat> three sprues to this kit we'll deal with this one first this is quite easy to deal with because it's the wheel and axle assemblies the thing I, I notice first of all about this particular kit's mouldings is that they're a little bit heavy set, aren't they? It's almost like they've been cast in wax. Um, I call this waxy detail, um, quite heavy set detail. And there's a reason for that, and that's because this kit is made from low impact injection moulding, which means that the pressure the plastic has been injected into the mould is an awful lot lower than say um, more mainstream model companies like Airfix, Revell, Tamiya and whatnot. Um, so the detail that you're going to get is going to be quite heavy set and it's not going to be fine it's going to be quite well it's going to be like what you can see here and those wheels the tire tread looks all right but the wheel nuts and the hubs they're not really what I would say are really accurate in terms of what the real Saladin's wheels look like. This is main, mainly the parts that go on the turret and the turret parts itself um, and again these parts they look they don't look that crisp do they? They look a little bit waxy and heavy set. The gun barrel looks reasonable though and the other parts don't look too bad. Detail on them isn't too bad is it? So that's the turret parts, and then you've got the body parts, and the body parts are interesting. You've got the lower, the lower belly part section there to the body, and the side panels there. There's not a lot of detail on it, but of course the axles go in there, and the wheels will hide an awful lot. And then you've got these these wheel dividers here, and that's the location markings for them. I think you know. I think you can probably work it out relatively easy. It's all right. And then you've got um, the body shell, the upper body shell surfaces here, and the actual detail on the upper body shell, again, is quite soft and it's not that crisp, it's quite heavy set and waxy. But I do remember that the Saracen was exactly the same as this. Um, 
and I'm not going to use the same paint that I painted the Saracen up in because I don't think the Saracen paint job was that good. I'm going to try and use maybe a thinner paint to paint this up. Try and keep off the acrylics if I can. Um, so that's the parts in the Alvis Saladin armoured car. Um, they're not much to write home about. <laughs> not fantastic. Um, but if I remember right, you know, it was a, a very quick and enjoyable build when I built the Saracen. That wasn't too bad either. Not very many parts to that. If anything, there's probably five or six more parts in this one than the Saracen. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'm just going to quickly go through the gump, a technical gump on this kit. So I'm just going to leave you with an image of the kit there in front of you so you can see. And then I'm going to um, just read this technical gump out. The model we're doing an inbox review on today is the JB Models Alvis Saladin Mark II and it's scaled in 176 scale. Um, the JB serial number on the kit is 1004 and its release date was 1994. The kit comprises of 45 parts on three grey plastic sprues. And there are decals for four versions, one of which is actually the Bovington Tank Museum's um, Saladin Mark II. And I do know that originally that tank, uh, same tank, it was an armoured car, originally that armoured car was supplied to Bovington in a green scheme. But I think at the moment it carries a, a green and desert yellow scheme. And I think at one time it was all completely covered in desert yellow. But the other three variants um, are for British Army service vehicles circa 1958 up to about late 1970s when the Saracen was actually replaced by the Scorpion tank. Now then, options and costs. In 176th scale, we have the Airfix Saladin, which is a JB Models kit, of course. This retails usually for between 10 and 13 pound. The JB Models Saladin is between 10 and 15 pound. In 172nd scale, the Gregorio KB Saladin, um, again, I haven't actually got any pricing information on that um, and it's not that easy to obtain either but then you've also got um, an ace model saladin and that generally retails between 14 and 20 quid in 140th scale there's a midori model saladin um, that again i haven't got any details of pricing on that either in 35th scale, Accurate Armour do a resin kit, which is about 30 to £50, pound, quite pricey. Dartmoor Military Models do a Saladin, again I've got no pricing on that. The Dragon Saladin, which in my opinion in 35th scale is probably the best priced option, because if anything I think it might be slightly better than the Tamiya kit in terms of quality, detail and accuracy, uh, but it does retail for slightly less. Um, firing line Saladin, again that's the multimedia, um, sorry the multi-mode um, format of parts and it, it comes in PE um, and resin parts and that kit again it retails, I've got no fixed prices but I have seen it go I think once about a year ago on eBay I think where it fetched pretty close to 90 quid. Um, the scale craft, the toy, the motorised toy, that's available for about 50 to £65. And the Tamiya um, models, they, I'm going to have to show them in, in uh, the two different release prices because the early release Saladin, sometimes they can go for stupid money. Um, I've seen them go for uh, as like 50 odd quid and I've also seen them go for over 80 quid. But the, the general run-of-the-mill Tamiya kit in, in the later variant boxes, that usually retails between £20 and £70. Now then, conclusions. You have to remember that this kit is made from low-impact plastic injection parts, and as such, the detail in the moulds will be less crisp than your average Airfix and Revell Armour models. But in the smaller scales, there isn't really an awful lot of competition. Um, the Dragon and Tamiya kits are really nice in 135th scale, but the Tamiya kits are getting rare now, and so they'll fetch stupid prices. And I think you probably be, would, would be better off with the Dragon models. Um, also, don't be put off by the Ace um, models kit in 172nd scale. Again, it's low-impact plastic injection mouldings. 
So you're going to have similar parts to it as to what's in the JB Models kit. Um, but they tend to be really accurate. I've seen this kit made up and it's really, really nice. Not that badly priced either. It's on a par with sort of the JB Models pricing. Um, the finished product will probably be okay actually. The JB kits, they aren't too bad. I have built the Saracen AV AFV before and it sort of came out okay, but I, I sort of messed up the paint job on it. I think I might have shown a photograph of it on one of my um, my model my model uh, the slideshow videos that I've done. I think it might be it might have featured on one of those somewhere, so you'll probably be able to see it. Anyway, but that's the inbox review for the JB model salad in Mark II in 76th scale. I hope that this video has been of some use. Um, if you have any information or you want have any questions about this kit or any of my other videos, just pop um, pop the question in the, the comments and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. Um, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you for the next clip. Bye bye for now.